presidents, I'ma make you think. George Washington had a grade school education. Abraham Lincoln, the Emancipation of Proclamation. He didn't free the slaves, they freed themselves. Slavery still exists, I wish we rebel. Alexander Hamilton, he was never president, but they still put him on the bill, neither was Benjamin. They say Grant did the most for blacks. Not a mystery that his presidency ranked the lowest in US history. Andrew Jackson was the owner of slaves forced Native Americans out their homes into graves. His face was supposed to be replaced by Harriet Tubman, but Donald Trump Welcome to Bar Exam episode number eight. The Bar Exam series highlights key moments in hip hop where lyricism and food for thought intersect. In episode eight, we highlight an underappreciated lyricist by the name of Papoose. And the song called Charades, Papoose ties in a popular board game called Charades to a rarely discussed topic amongst amongst MCs, which is the hip hop police. We'll dissect the lyrics from this song and really break down what Papoose was trying to say on Bar Exam episode number eight. Papoose would enter the mixtape scene in the early to mid 2000s. He would partner with DJ K Slay and really start to carve a name for himself on the mixtape scene. Papoose would become known for two things, repping Brooklyn hard and also being a gifted lyricist. During this time, lyricism on the mixtape scene was at an all-time high. Papoose would really start to set himself apart from other mixtape MCs, as he would also rhyme about social and political issues throughout some of his mixtapes. Papoose would start to release songs with board game references, like the song Chess, which relates to the board game Chess, and also Monopoly. This time, it would be a game called Charades, where you drop clues to see if people can guess what topic you're discussing. The hook is incredible for Charades because it's really building all the verses around it, and it's really defining the motive and the power behind the subject, which is the hip hop police. A couple things that you can really look at is when he says, I can do what I wanna do, why can't I? He's showing the power of law enforcement. When he's saying, let a thug get rich, how can I? He's showing possible motivation for jealousy as far as MCs coming from where they come from, being labeled as thugs and making million, millions of dollars off hip hop or even billions at this point. And then he's basically telling you that I'm watching all of you rappers, don't you realize? So he's saying it doesn't matter where you go, doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter how far you think you've made it, I'm still watching you. Give me the keys to Sean Poe handcuffs. Give me the keys to little Kim handcuffs. Give me the keys to see murder handcuffs. So I can tighten them and let the cell slam shut. Gangsta rapper, it's time to man up for I tighten your handcuffs. Cause they all make songs about killing each other. When I bring them in for questioning, they all squill on each other. So what's really dope about the first verse is to really bring what he's saying to light is he's talking about three rappers who have very prominent and very big court cases that were shown all throughout the media, which is Shine, Little Kim, and C Murder. So another take on this song is he's actually speaking to rappers in a third person because when he says, so I gangster rapper, it's time to man up before I tighten your handcuffs. So he's almost saying like, listen, if you're gonna talk about this life or try to become this character, you got to really change what you're doing or you are going to end up in jail. So he's almost like foreshadowing what could happen. Also, I think the biggest takeaway from this verse is when he says, 
because they all make songs about killing each other, right? So he's saying that all these so-called gangster rappers talk about how they're killing each other. But when it's time to go inside and talk about what happened, they all squilling each other. So sort of like the Nino Brown effect. It's almost like Nino Brown was this bigger than life gangster right and then at the end of the day with all the madness all the things he did when it was time to face real jail time he ended up squilling on er you know on everybody so this was a it was a dope way to set up the song and a dope way to to um kind of bridge together what he's trying to say each other, you stick a needle deep in your skin and carve it with ink. You call it tattoo, I call it the mark of the beast. We identify criminals who rob in the streets by scars and tattoos. Don't you? So, this next part, you can take it two ways. He could be potentially bringing in esoteric knowledge about the pitfalls of tattoos as far as what it really means from that standpoint. But then he's bringing it back to the song where he's saying that. Whenever you are profiled or if you ever have to take pictures for law enforcement, one thing you can't get rid of or one thing that will always stay on you is not only your scars, but your tattoos. So he's really bringing almost like a double meaning for tattoos on this on this part of the song. Father the thing, they blame me for biggie murder, but the case died out. So now that's for me to know and for you to find out. I got the industry on lock and key. Who am I? I'm the hip hop police. I could do what I want to do, why can't I? Let a thug get rich, how can I? I'm watching all of you rappers, don't you realize? Father the thing, they blame me for biggie murder, but the case died out. So now that's for me to know and for you to find out. I got the industry on lock and key. Who am I? I'm the hip hop police. I could do what I want to do, why can't I? Let a thug get rich, how can I? I'm watching all of you rappers, don't you realize? Father the thing. These next bars are incredible because he really starts to paint like an overall picture of not just what was happening in the mid 2000s but even in the 90s because there was a supposed supposedly a lot of police presence around when Biggie was you know assassinated and then we all know Russell Poole he always felt that it was corrupt cops that were involved in the downfall of Biggie not all these other things that are really being talked about so I think this was a perfect way to kind of expound on the police presence and also just building a case for what he's trying to talk about in the song give me the keys to benny siegel handcuffs give me the keys to irv Gotti handcuffs give me the keys to snoop dog handcuffs he got acquitted he lucked up they making more money than me then rap stars pull jigger over maybe it's a gun papoose is doing the same thing he did from the first verse as far as reintroducing three more hip hop court cases and then kind of further bridging his hook to his next verse. So he's now bringing in Beanie Siegel right from his court case. Then we have Irv Gotti, who obviously is not a rapper, but a rap executive on one of the biggest rap labels at that time. And of course, Snoop Dogg's humongous case in the early 90s but the key point to to this is when he says they're making more money than me damn rap star so now he's tying in the success of, of of rappers and possible jealousy right so now he's saying pull jigga over which is jay-z he's probably got a gun in his car now that part is is huge because if you remember 50 Cent said that he was getting plotted against because, of course, 50 Cent is one of the biggest rappers of all time and one of the most wealthiest rappers of all time. So and this is what this is basically at the height of his his dominance in the early to mid 2000s. Right. So 50 Cent said the police tried to get p which is prodigy remember prodigy had signed to g unit records um in the mid 2000s right so 50 cent and this is kind of tying to pull jigga over there's a gun in his car so 50 cent said the police tried to get prodigy to set me up they asked him if he can keep 
if I keep any guns or drugs around. They wanted him to put a gun in my car. He didn't do it. Instead, he told me what they were trying to do, my man Prodigy. So that would really tie in with this would almost like come to life because you can say these things never happen or these are just fictional. But when you actually can tie in um, what he's saying with Jay-Z possibly to what actually happened to 50 Cent really brings this verse into reality. The reason why this song is so brilliant is because he's still continuing to stay on topic He's still continuing to bridge verse one to verse two. He's also tying in the potential downfall of not only the assassination of Biggie, but the assassination of Tupac. So he's bringing in that police presence, right? If you remember Tupac, Tupac's bodyguard, one of his main bodyguards, happened to be an undercover agent nobody knew about this right nobody knew well obviously not nobody but tupac had no idea that the person that was next to him was an undercover agent so that's showing you the ultimate presence so you don't have to take pictures or be in a you know a, a, a white van or some undercover car you have the undercover surveillance that's standing right next to you that that's recording all your whatever you're doing and is sending it back to who knows who you know who knows who is going back to right so he's showing the constant surveillance of hip-hop police and hip-hop but if you think about tupac when he got out of jail he was just trying to record music he didn't want to go back to jail. So you're basically at that point, you're wasting your time because you're following a wrong person. But obviously these things are done for a specific reason. And if you really think about it, the same person that was with Pac wasn't with Pac in Vegas. So it's just, it's very, it's just a very crazy um, scenario. But again, Papoose is really dropping a lot of clues in his song and it's really all tying together. Can you recognize the pop when it's close to playing? You gotta identify them. It's like a game of charades. Take a loan from a bank. I'm borrowing money. I take a loan from my homies. I'm laundering money. When Papoose said, can you recognize a cop when his clothes is playing? You gotta identify him. It's like a game of charades. So back in, I would say back in that era of hip hop, I don't think a lot of MCs did not realize that they were being watched, they were being surveillance. All these things weren't really known to them because they're out trying to, you know, make music, they're out trying to tour, they're out trying to change their lives. So it wouldn't be to years and maybe even decades i would just say decades later where now there's real confirmation because complex did an article where they're saying meet the hip-hop cop a former nyp dete detective in charge of the rap intelligence unit so what pap was saying in the early 2000s didn't really come into light until way 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 later and even the last part well, we'll just finish the verse. Take a loan from my bank. I'm borrowing money. I take a loan from my homie. I'm laundering money. I mean, he he just dropped so many jewels in this song. My nine. Now I hold a microphone. Is you out of your mind? Hip hop police. Is hip hop a crime? Freedom of speech. Y'all think so evil. Rather give freedom to my speech than give freedom to my people. Instead of watching us, you should have watched Ground Zero. Schwarzenegger killing the movies, but he a hero. To all of the rappers, we gotta stay incognito. To do it our way, like Carlito. Cause they wanna stink in their way. If everybody looked at life the same way, we don't meet our makers the same day. I could do. Papoose would end the song with the true definition of food for thought. He would end the song with a lot of key points. The first thing, as we've been discussing, is hip-hop police. So he's, he says, hip-hop police is hip-hop a crime. And if you really think about it, hip-hop obviously is a, is a culture, but it's still a genre of music 
why are these people being police? These people are just trying to make a living. These people are trying to perform music. Why are they being followed? Is hip hop a crime? Why, why are other genres have their own police following them around? So that's, that's just a really key piece thing of thinking about. Second thing, freedom of speech. Y'all think so evil, rather given, rather give freedom to my speech than freedom to my people. So he's saying, think about the law, think about the constitution, the right of freedom of speech, right? But at the same time, the same country had slavery as being legal. So you rather say someone has the freedom to speak, but for people of color, you don't have the right to actually live in a country that you've always lived in. You have the right to be looked at as property. So you rather say, I can say what I want, but I can't actually be free. That is that is just a, a, a major point in a song. And it really just shows the depth of what Papoose is able to bring to, to music. The last couple pieces is he's also bringing in like the violence of, of film, because if you really think about film, when film has violent concepts or if film has a lot of violence, that is visually you're visually seeing that you're almost enjoying it because you have popcorn. So it's almost like you're just being numb down or, or you're just being numb to violence because if you're constantly seeing it, you're, and if you see it on a film and then you see it on the news, it's almost like you, it doesn't really register. So he brings in, you know, obviously Arnold Schwarzenegger, who a lot of his films were extremely violent. So he's looked at as a hero. He's, you know, making millions of dollars off the genre of films. But then a lot of rappers are being down. And and it's not to say that you should talk about violence in music, but he's just pointing out the hypocrisy of on one aspect you can show violence, but on another aspect that people are talking about what's going on in their environments, you're looked at as what's called a gangster rapper. And then finally, he's saying if if everybody lived their life the same way, we'd all meet our makers the same day. So he's saying cause they want us to cause they want us to think their way. So he's saying if you're adopting the violence the all the violence and destruction that came with the colonization of america the colonization of india the colonization of africa the colonization of of hawaii or just any place where colonization happened and just think about the type of violence and things that came with that. So he's saying if you want to think that way, if you want to drop nukes, if everybody thought that way, you know, everybody would be gone from this planet. So this song, on a just from a, a standpoint of just looking at music, he's just showing you that you can do more with music. Not everybody can do this because you have to be an exceptional thinker. You have to really kind of take yourself out of hip hop and kind of bring realism to hip hop. So not saying everybody can do this, but through repetition, through hard work, through continuing your craft to, to because he, you know, Papoose obviously didn't start rapping in. In the 2000s, he obviously has been rapping longer because by the time you see him, he's a finished product. He's he's so great at what he's doing, but it took a lot to get there. So he's basically saying, if you work on your craft, if you study life, you can mirror everything that you've learned, bring it into hip hop. And what he's also showing you is that with conscious rappers, there's three things you have to do to make a, a perfect conscious song you have to have the production because this beat is is it's a dope beat he brings in a dope hook and then he has a dope lyric so with that trifecta he's showing that if you a conscious mc if you have these three things on point the song is going to be a classic and the song is going to stand 
the time because what with, with conscious music was dope about it is is it doesn't matter what year it dropped it can always be discussed it, if it's that powerful it can always stand the time and it can always be relevant that's the key to conscious music is if you make that type of music and all these things connect then you can discuss this song this many years later so shout out to pat Poos. Shout out to his his thought provoking lyrics, and again, this is definitely a dope song to to look at and review.